Yes. Um, to establish the patient's current condition. To establish the current condition. What else? Right, so you want to monitor to see if the patient has had any changes from when uh, you got reports. So maybe you had a shift report, and when you got in the room, maybe the, the uh, nurse said that the patient's been up walking around, and when you get in, in the room, the patient is doubled over and in pain, moaning, okay? What else are purposes of physical assessment? With some more. How about evaluation? Would you not evaluate? So if you, if for some reason you, the patient was doubled over in pain, you gave them a, a pain medication, would you not want to come back and look to see if that pain medication works? Right? So that's evaluation. What else could you think of? So we yeah. Um, to identify maybe some certain problems the um, client may have that needs treatment. Okay, so you want to definitely identify if there's any problems that was not identified earlier, right? You also want to make sure that um, if there's a potential. So when we're doing our care plan, we're often looking not only at the present problem, but is there a potential for it? For instance, to give you an example, a patient who is an older patient who's bedridden, okay? Maybe they can move their arms and legs and maybe they can get up or sit at the side of the bed with assistance. But is there a potential for a problem there? Okay, what? So there's a potential problem with skin integrity, right? Is there some other problem that you can think of? Circulation, definitely. Because they're not moving, the blood's not flowing. If the blood is not flowing, especially to the lower extremities, then what happens? What happens? A little bit more than just swelling. What? Okay, could be edema, but what else? Could lose feeling, what else? What? Blood clots. That would be the big thing, right? Because what happens, the blood just stays stationary. It's not moving like it's supposed to. The heart's not able to pump it the way it's supposed to. And so the blood stays in the lower extremities because the patient is not being exercised or not moving. So that's a huge risk for an older person or someone who's bedridden, okay? So we talked about to establish a baseline, right? So when we go in, we're establishing the baseline for our shift. We wanna know, yes, we had the uh, nurse shift report, but now I need to look at my patient and see what's going on with the patient right now so that if there's any changes that occur, whether they're good or bad, I already know. Is it one-sided? So she smiles and it's symmetrical, correct? Then we would look at her eyebrows. Are they even? Okay. We look at her eyes. Are they on either side of her nose? And are they symmetrical? Okay, just by looking at them. We look at the shape of her face and the shape of her head, okay? And we get a picture of that. We get a picture of her hair, okay? Is her hair evenly distributed or are there balding spots? Or are there uh, sores, dry patches, and then the dreaded nits, right? So lice, nits, okay? 
So when you see someone that has a lot of dandruff or looks like dandruff, it could be dandruff, but it could also be nips, right? So when we're looking at this, uh, looking at her face, we're just taking a mental picture, okay? And when I'm looking at her whole body, I would say that she's a well-nourished woman between whatever age she is and that she, that um, that her face is symmetrical and that her hair is evenly distributed over her scalp, okay? Does that make sense? So you use inspection first. And when you go to each body section, if we go to the chest next, we're inspecting first. Before we ever touch, we're inspecting. When we go to the extremities, or the gastrointestinal area and then the extremities, we're doing the same thing. You're gonna look, inspect, all right? Does that make sense? Before you ever touch. All right, so now that we have have a visual, visual of her, we're now gonna focus on the scalp because we said head to toe, right? So I'm gonna focus on the head, not just the scalp, okay? So I'm not gonna do anything, but. All right, so now I need to see, I mean, when I look at it, when I look at her, her, her face and her head is symmetrical. When I look at her, she's well, you know, she's a, a very a well-developed woman and she, everything seems to be fine just by picturing it. She's not doubled over in pain, she doesn't have hair that's uh, disheveled. She doesn't have clothes that are disheveled. She's, she answered my questions. By the way, what is your name? Crystal Diaz. Okay. And your date of birth, you can just say anything. 1178. Okay. So, and I looked and I saw that that is Crystal Diaz and that is her date of birth. So I already know that um, neurologically, just that very basic exam, that she's, you know, that she's oh, within normal for right now. We haven't done the total exam, but we, from what we see, she seems to be okay, right? So now, the next thing we would do is we would look at her hair in more depth. So we're gonna look at each and every part of the body separately. Even though we've done, we've uh, performed a, a visual on the patient. We are now going to take each part of the body and examine it. Okay? And this is your which, which kind of assessment? Is it a focal assessment? Head to toe. It's a head to toe shift assessment. Okay? So, we're going to, and you always ask for permission, and I will say that. If a patient says, no, I don't want you to do that, respect it. Don't say, oh no, I've got to do it because I've got to get checked off on this one. What you would say is defer by the patient, okay? So you don't leave it blank, you say defer. Does that make sense? So, um, Ms. Diaz, is it okay if I look at your ears? Now, one thing that I would say with, with women, our hair is our crown jewel, right? Our crown jewel. So, uh, oftentimes, they may say, no, I don't want you to get sex my okay? And that's okay. So what would you say? What would you document? Deferred. Deferred, okay? Deferred. You could also say the patient refused, either one. All right, so she's given us permission. I have on my gloves, right? I wash my hands and I put on my gloves when I walked into the room, correct? All right, so I'm not gonna touch it. But you would then begin to touch her hair. You would part her hair. You want to touch the hair to see if there's any bumps, any bruises, any lumps that are there. And if they are, you might say, oh, do you feel that? I see. What happened here? And they may or may not know. No, that's just my hair. 
that's just the way my my family's scalp is. Sometimes um, we we have um, each family has different little perks about about them. Okay, as far as physical physical assessment goes. So you want to make sure that you touch the whole scalp, feeling for lumps or bumps, part the hair so that you can look to see if there's any bruising there. And also you want to look to see if there's any dry skin there. You want to also look to see if there's any nits there, okay? Especially with children, okay? Does that make sense? So even if you see dandruff, you want to use a, you want to, if it's dandruff, it'll flake off, correct? But if it's not dandruff, it'll, it won't move. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. From there, we're going to go to her eyebrow. And so I know she has on makeup, so I'm not going to touch her eyebrow, but you would, again, ask permission, and then you would actually palpate the eyebrow. And you notice that I'm doing them together, not separate, not one over here and then this one. You're, you're performing it at the same time. And the purpose of that, you're palpating the eyebrow. You palpate them so that you can see if there's if, if there is a lump or a bump, is it on both sides or not? Okay, because that's important. Because that could be her bone structure if it's on both sides. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, you want to make sure that it's evenly distributed. You want to make sure that if she has eyebrows, there is, you know, if there's certain conditions like alopecia where they won't have hair at all. So there may not be any eyebrows, no eyelashes, or no nasal hair besides hair on the head, okay? So it's important for you to do that. So from there, you would look at her eyelashes and you would see that you would make sure that they were evenly distributed. Does somebody have a pen light? So you want to thank you. So you want to make sure that her, her eyelashes, that there's, you know, that they're evenly distributed. The other thing you want to do is you want to take your pen light and you're going to measure the outer cantus. So if you'll turn your face to the side. So the outer cantus of the eye. You see this part here is the outer cantus of the eye. And you're going to line it up with the ear. If her ear was in alignment and was midline, some of the upper part of the ear should be above the, the pin, the mark pin light. Okay, do you see what I'm saying? It should never be, if it's below, then that's concerning. It could be that the, that the ear is right in alignment, but it should not be way up here. Her penis shouldn't be way up here, or it shouldn't be way down there. Does that make sense? Does everybody see what I'm talking about? So you're, you're really drawing an imaginary line to make sure that the eyes and the ears are in alignment. Does that make sense? Okay. Did you guys see on this side? Could you turn that way? So you take the outer cantus of the eye and you put your pen light or you can draw an imaginary line with your finger and her pina, the top part of her ear, is right at the level of the pen, which is fine. You don't want it way up here or way down there. So you would say that it is symmetrical, it is in line. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so then the next thing that we would look at is we look in her eyes 
But look, before we ever look in the eye, we want to measure the pupil. Okay, where, where's the pupil in the eye? Well, everybody's pointing, but... <laughs> and so it's the black. Everybody's is black in the center of your iris. The iris is what? The color part of the eye, right? And then the pupil is the black part of the eye. So what you want to do is you want to measure the pupil. And I, I think on your pen light, it has, does it have that? Okay. Yeah. So what's the normal size for the pupil? What? Yes. No. Yes, it's three to seven millimeters. That's why you have this pen light. Okay, so when you're looking, you'll have her look straight ahead. And she has nice blue eyes. This would be wonderful when we're checking for um, her um, dilation of her pupil. But for right now, you would take your pen light and you would look to see what size her pupil is. And she has a six. So is that within normal? Six millimeters. But she's within normal. So normal pupil size should be three to seven millimeters. Okay? So if it's smaller than that or larger than that, that is concerning. Before you document that, have your instructor or your preceptor help you look at it. When you have really dark eyes, it's sometimes very difficult to measure the pupil. Okay? But not impossible. All right. So you're going to measure the pupil. You're not just measuring one. Whatever you do to one, you got to do to the other. Right? Because there is a condition. What's that condition where the pupils are different sizes? Who said it? Say it out loud. And Sequoia. Okay? And Sequoia. What page is that on? 385. I would highlight that. What does that mean? What does Anzacoria mean? Not just some type of impairment. Okay? So what happens is it's a neurological issue, right? It's an impairment of the, neurolog of the neurological system. What happens is we know that the optic nerve, that um, it bifurcates, okay? And what would happen with anzacoria is that that's not happening, okay? It's 385, all right? Do y'all see it? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure. All right. So now that we've measured the pupils, the size, we know that her um, her ears are in alignment with her eyes, which is very important. So when you have a child uh, that has a congenital abnormality, a lot of times their ears are higher or lower, which can indicate many things. One thing is kidney problem, okay? So there's other things that it could indicate as well, but it, it can be kidney, all right? Now, let's look at, this would be great, I don't know if you want to put this on the camera, but um, her pupils, because, her, I mean, her irises are so light, that it might be a good idea for everybody to see her reaction when the light is uh, shined on her eyes 